I'm always exploring new ways to improve my productivity. I use Apple Notes to take notes, jot down points, and organize my thoughts. I use Apple and Outlook Calendar to schedule my day, week, and month. I also use Google Workspace to collaborate for my YouTube work. But Notion came along and just replaced all the three apps. My productivity took a big leap and I was blown away by Notion's features, ease of use, collaboration tools, calendar and everything. And with this video, we will go over what Notion is, how to use it, what are some basic features you should be aware of and how can you get started with Notion to take your productivity to the next level. So let's get started. Let's start from the basic. What is Notion? Think of Notion as a complete productivity setup. You can take notes on it, you can create to-do lists, you can manage your calendar there, you can track your budget, you can manage your projects and tasks. Pretty much anything productive task you can think of can be done on Notion. It's incredibly powerful. You can access it through the web. There are Windows, Mac, iOS and Android apps too where you can use it anywhere. I'm an active user of Apple Notes but it's restricted to Apple devices only. So I'm exploring Notion as a potential alternative to replace Apple Notes. Notion is free for individual users. There are paid tiers for more features, but the free version is everything I need and even more. Okay, how do we use Notion? This is the homepage of Notion. Once you log in, there is a sidebar on the left and the main section on the right side, which displays the content. The sidebar has three sections, a top section for searching, inbox and default pinned items. The middle section is where all the pages are. We will explore this in detail in a bit. The next section is for calendar, settings, templates and trash. When you click on a page, the content of the page is displayed on the main section. Okay, let's create a page and I'll show you how good the workflow is on Notion. In the page sidebar, click on the plus icon to create a new page. I'm going to use this page to plan for an upcoming vacation. So I'm going to title this page as Cancun Vacation. If I hover slightly above it, it gives me an option to set up an icon and a cover image too. I'm going to select a travel icon which also shows up on the page navigation section. I'm also going to add a cover image by clicking here. Looks great. Now I click below and start typing to take notes, add text and everything. But the real power of Notion comes from Notion Blocks. Blocks are just type of elements that you can add to your page. To see the various blocks you can add, just type slash and Notion will show you all the options for the blocks. I'm going to create a few headings for my page like flight, hotel, places to visit, packing list, itinerary, etc. To keep it neat, I'm going to add a divider in between each blocks by again typing slash and selecting the divider. My page is starting to take shape now. Under flight, I am going to search for block again. I am going to select a table and add my flight details as a table. Under the hotel, instead of plain text, I am going to type slash, search for Google Maps and embed a proper map right into my page. So cool, right? Under the packing list, I am going to type slash, select to-do list and I am going to start adding the things I need to pack. I am going to finish up this page with a few links for this trip, some images of places I want to visit and in the end, it looks so beautiful. There are so many more useful Notion blocks which can immensely level up your page. This is an intro to Notion video. But if you want all the information on all those amazing Notion blocks and how I use them, let me know in the comments and I will make a separate video on that. Now, if this is all too much information for one page, Notion lets me create sub pages for easy organization too. Here, I am going to create sub pages under my vacation page. Cancun trip is one sub page. And within Cancun, I can create more sub pages for each section like hotel, travel, itinerary, packing list, etc. This way, I can organize all my notes so easily and beautifully. I'm going to show you one more powerful Notion page. This is a weekly to do list page which helps me organize my whole week. At the beginning of the week, I just click this button to create a new week. Here, I can add my to do items for the whole week, track them, and see my progress here. There is a navigation page at the side. My whole week is organized nicely into sections. I can add more items if I want to and this has been more productive than even a dedicated to-do app. But wait, 
This looks too complex, right? There is a button, there are multiple blocks across the page. How do I even create a page like this to track it week over week? That's where Notion sets itself apart. Notion has something called templates where this whole page is created as a template by other Notion users and you can just browse and start using them. To browse for pre-created templates, go to this section on the sidebar called templates. Here you can search for thousands of templates categorized into various types created by other Notion users. I'm looking to create a good finance tracker for myself. So I'm going to search for finance tracker and see what shows up. This one seems to have a lot of downloads. I'm going to try it. I could just click and click add and it will be added as a page to my private pages. This page is fully customizable, but there are tables where I can input my expenses and income and it shows up month wise and quarter wise expenses, savings, income, etc. As I update my income section, all the remaining sections update themselves like an Excel spreadsheet. Have you seen any other note ticking app to be able to do such a thing? There are thousands of such templates for project tracking, personal planning, school trip planner and more. You can pick and customize it so easily. Did you notice something in the finance tracker? The page had two sections, one for income and one for expenses. Each section had tables to enter the data. How did these normal looking tables update other tables and graph like an Excel spreadsheet? That's because these are not actual normal tables, but these are database tables. This is another powerful feature of Notion that I have come to love. Let me show you how that works with an example. This is a page I have created to track the videos I'm creating for my YouTube channel. Here I can either create a simple table to list the video topics I want to create and add column to show the status and category. But that does not let me filter and customize the data. So instead, I'm going to create a database table by typing slash by selecting database inline. A basic database table is created. I'm going to create a column called category with type as select with a few different options. I'm also going to create another column called status. It already has three options here, which I'm happy with. Now I can add rows to it and select the appropriate values for the columns easily. Each row can open up to a new page where I can type in my points, scripts, notes, etc. It makes it so easy for me to track my work, add my notes, write a full script, add dates and connect it to my calendar, create to-do list all in the same app. What I also do is with this table I've created, I can create more views. For example, I will create a view by clicking on this plus icon and viewing the same table as a bold. This shows the same data based on the status. I will also create one more view, but this time the bold will be displayed based on the category of the videos I have added. All these different views I have created for my database table, it shows up as a sub page in my sidebar. What I can do is I will favorite this database table and it will be pinned to my favorites on the sidebar for quick navigation. So whenever I have a new video idea, I go to my favorites, select the page, add a new row for my new video, select a category, mark the status as in progress. I click on the new page and I create two sections, notes and script. I then start taking notes, bullet points, any links from external resources I will need to refer later and then start writing the script with all these points included. This lets me create a proper workflow for my YouTube channel and it has helped me a lot recently. There are two more features I use very often and I want to show it to you. First, when I know that I have completed a page and I do not want to accidentally edit it, I go to the three dots on the top right, select it and enable lock page. This way the page is locked and I cannot edit it without unlocking. This has been incredibly useful when I view the page on my phone. On a small screen, I accidentally edit the page when scrolling or navigating and locking the page has helped me prevent from unintended modifications. Second, check this page out. I've created a proper vacation planning page for our trip. I want to share it with my husband. Notion lets me collaborate so easily by adding him as a user. But I'm not sharing this page to collaborate. I want to simply pass this information to him easily, like a PDF or a doc. The three dots section lets me export as a PDF or any other type. Again, a but. Instead, I'm going to publish this page as a web page. I'm going to click on the share at the top right, click on publish, select publish. 
Now this page is published online and anyone with the link can access this as an unmodifiable page. This opens up a ton of possibilities. I can share my recipes with my friends, share my trip details, share any notes across the web so easily and they can open it just like a web page. Okay, I've already discussed a lot of information for one video. I haven't even started on the collaboration features which Notion is known for. And if you want to know more about other features of Notion, drop a comment and I'll make a separate video on those features. And if this video was helpful, please like, share and subscribe which helps me make more such content. I'll see you all in the next one. Until then, Merry Christmas. This is Anjana. Bye-bye.